The purpose of this video is to introduce you to parallelogram proofs. If we know that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then we know that all of the properties that hold true for the parallelogram will also hold true for our particular quadrilateral. For that reason, it might be helpful and useful to know whether a particular quadrilateral is indeed a parallelogram or not. So we're going to look at some ways in this video that you can prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. You can use any of the reasons that are in the box um, in your notes. You can show that your quadrilateral has both sides of uh, both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, and that will make it a parallelogram. In number two, you can show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, and that will make your quadrilateral a parallelogram. You can show that your quadrilateral has one pair of opposite sides that are both parallel and at the same time congruent. You may show that both pairs of the opposite angles of your quadrilateral are congruent, and that will make your quadrilateral a parallelogram. Or in the last one, you can show that your diagonals of your quadrilateral bisect each other, and that will make your quadrilateral a parallelogram. All right, so let's take a look at how we might use some of these reasons in proofs. In the very first example, we're given that lines A, B, and C, D are parallel, and that lines A, D, and B, C are parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those guys in my proof. So top and bottom are parallel as are the left side and right side. And by virtue of reason number one on that list, we've got top side parallel to bottom side, left side parallel to right side, so we've got ourselves a quadrilateral where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. In other words, quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. And because ABCD is a parallelogram, I know that for every parallelogram, opposite angles are always congruent. So that tells me that angles 1 and 2 are congruent. And that's exactly what it is that we were trying to prove. All right, so let's get this down in writing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with those two pairs of parallel sides. And because both of those pairs of sides are parallel, I automatically know ABCD is a parallelogram. Just by the definition of parallelogram, who he is is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. So I'm going to say any quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides is a parallelogram. And now, because this figure ABCD is a parallelogram, I know all of the properties that hold true for parallelograms also hold true for my parallelogram. The property that I'm going to use is that all parallelograms have opposite angles that are congruent. And for that reason, I can go ahead and conclude that angles 1 and angle 2 are congruent. And I'm just going to say a parallelogram has opposite sides that are congruent. Beautiful. Okay, number two is a little bit different in that now we're looking at a parallelogram on the core or a quadrilateral on the coordinate plane, but the idea that we're going to prove it's a parallelogram is still the same. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plot this parallelogram. So there's vertex A, there's vertex B, and I've got to go back because I didn't plot vertex A correctly. There we go. Let me grab my straight edge and I'll go ahead and connect its vertices. Now, what's nice about using or having a quadrilateral on the coordinate plane is that I can use slope, midpoint, and distance formulas to prove any one of the five items in the box upstairs. So I can use slopes to prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel which would make my quadrilateral parallelogram. 
I could use distance formula to show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, making my quadrilateral a parallelogram. I could use both slope and distance on just one of those pairs of opposite sides to show that they're both parallel and congruent. Or I could use distance formula four times in order to show that the diagonals bisect each other. So really the only one that I can't use from that list upstairs is to show that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So you may choose to do this proof very differently than I do, and we both may indeed be correct. I'm going to go ahead and show that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Just because if I had a choice in working with the slope formula or the distance formula, I would prefer slope. But again, it's a matter of personal preference. If you want to use distance and show both pairs of opposite sides congruent, go for it. You're entirely, totally correct. Anytime I'm going to use a formula, the first thing I'm going to do is write it down on my paper. And now that I've written it down, I'm all set to go ahead and find some slopes. So I'm going to go ahead and start with segment AB. I'm going to identify to the person reading my paper that, hey, I'm finding the slope of segment AB here. So slope is going to be equal to the change in y values, 4 subtract 3, over the change in x values, 3 subtract negative 1. And again, if you're good at mental math, go ahead and compute these mentally. If you know in your heart of hearts that you're not so good with operations with integers, go ahead and plug them into your calculator. The side opposite AB is CD. I'm going to go find its slope next. So I end up with negative 1 divided by negative 4, but I know that a negative divided by negative is really a positive. So that slope also 1 fourth. Now these two guys came out to be exactly the same, which is exactly what I would expect. I'm trying to show this guy as a parallelogram. He better have two pairs of parallel sides where the slope is the same, or I know that I made a mistake somewhere in my work. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find the slope of the left side and the slope of the right side. So my right side here is side BC. And again, I'm going to identify to the reader that this is the piece that I'm finding the slope for. And lastly, I'll go find the slope of side AD. And a little quick check here. My two slopes came out exactly the same, which is as I would expect. If they had come out differently, that would be a clue to me for me to know that I had made a mistake and I need to go back and revisit my work. At this point now, I need to write a little blurb and explain why the calculations that I've done proves that this quadrilateral is indeed a parallelogram. So I'm going to say segments with the same slope are parallel. And this makes the top side congruent, or sorry, the top side parallel to the bottom. So side AB is parallel to side CD. And at the same time, the left side parallel to the right side. So side BC is parallel to side AD. And then since this quadrilateral has two pairs of sides that are parallel, it must be a parallelogram. All right, so that should give you a good start on writing some parallelogram proofs. I want you to up at the top of the next page, like always, identify the key ideas, 
summarize what's important from the video that you just watched, and then see if you can apply what you just learned in order to prove that quadrilateral PQRS is a parallelogram there in number two.